usually we show you the kitchen. That's right. But today, we're on the farm! We are here at Kinderhook Farm with farmer Lee Ranny. And friend. To talk grass-fed beef, we are going to try three different steaks. The ones that we normally get in the shop are from 28-month-old animals, and we're gonna compare that to an eight-year-old animal and a 15-year-old animal. Never had it, really wanna try it. Really, 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 really hungry. These are probably 20 to 26 months old. Before 1940, the average age of a harvested animal was four to five years. Now it's 12 to 15 months. Grain and feedlots have just totally changed the system. For us with grass, because they, they grow so much slower, it takes between 22 and 36 months. If the animals are generally gonna be about 26 to 30 months, how do you end up with a bunch of animals a lot, a lot older than that? So each year we have about 100 to 120 calves. Those mothers, if they're healthy and productive, will stay with us for between eight and 12 years. Because of the aftershocks of the mad cow epidemic, no animal over 30 months can leave the slaughterhouse with the spine intact because that's the place they're most, most worried about uh, mad cow disease, even though there hasn't been any. But It's a challenge to get a whole beef that is missing its entire spine because it's something that they need to do on the kill floor, which is basically a finesse cut with a chainsaw. Processors don't like it. So the perceived value of it goes down once yeah. it's once it's over 30 months. Yeah. In an industrial system, what happens to the older animals? Well, they get put in the in the food chain for hamburger and cheap cuts and prepared meats and all the stuff that's disguised. But some of them, they're prime beef. They're very good eating. So you, you know as well as anybody that over the last 10 years, everybody's obsessed with dry aging and yeah, they'll dry the something. all the time. Yeah. Do you see the like a really big difference like in the flavor from older animals? Oh yeah, they had that much longer to have this incredibly diverse diet. They've walked around, used their muscles, different seasons. I mean, it, it all affects that. Well, we're talking about all this complexity of muscles and flavors. Kind of want to check it out. Let's do it. We don't have the bone on the 15, but you know they did do a very nice job of taking it off on the on the eighth. Still looks like a great steak. <laughs> Lee, which one are you putting money on? Like in the like in the most? Or just a gut feel. I think that one. The eight year. Brent, what are you thinking? I'm super excited about the 15. I think I'm going 15. I'm kind of curious, I don't know. The older animals I think are best at rare. What do you think? I think so, yeah, yeah. but I think everything's better at rare. I'm a mid-rare because I think that it gives it a little bit more time to render the fat. Let's live on the edge. Yeah, <laughs> and that, the yellow fat on that really old stick is just something else. Want to wait the longest five minutes of your life, let these rest? If you've never had a grass-fed steak before, one of the first things you you definitely notice is the meat and the fat are much less sweet. I guess before that would even be, you're gonna see like a little bit less fat on the cap. It's I don't done. think it's as greasy. The fat tastes good, but it doesn't, doesn't grease you up. I'm gonna get us started on 28 months. So this is beef that we get every week at the shop. This is kind of our control. We know this steak, we've had it before. We know it's great. The end here. It's clean, tender. It's really good. It's excellent quality that that's, this is our baseline. Yeah. We're pretty freaking lucky. Also a huge difference that you can even see between these three steaks is the, the pigment that the fat does mm -hmm. pick up. Um, you know, the yellower the fat is, you can tell the older the animal is. Carotene, yeah. And uh, man, that yellow fat packs a punch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, really, really does. It's something a lot of our customers always say is like, oh, you can taste the grass. You can taste like the minerality of like whatever is going through the soil is getting into the animal. Like it's really there. I'm getting excited. Now we get into the stuff that we don't really ever get to get to try. Let, let alone back to back, that's, that's, side, yeah. that's side to side. Is, right. This is my guy. That's an ambitious piece. Woo. Yeah, he's an ambitious guy. Okay, I'm going with Ben's. Okay. 
Oh my God, there's so much more, just like a depth of flavor. And nice chew too. Mm-hmm. So nice, nice and tender. I know it's obvious, but beefy. There's just more beef flavor. That is so freaking good. It was my pick, remember. That's the kind of steak I feel like when you go to a steakhouse, like when you get like the 120 day like dry aged steak, like you're looking for that, but that's not dry aged at all. Right. That's just. This is just what beef should be. Yeah. God, that is phenomenal. All right. Let's do it, Ben. I am so excited for this. I've never had anything this old before. It feels the same cutting. Like this does not feel tough at all. Wow. It's pretty wow. intense. Isn't it? Yeah. And pretty damn tender. Mm-hmm. Great texture. The fat is fantastic. When you hear people describe like big red wine, that's exactly what we're tasting here. Mm -hmm. There's a slight sweetness, but it's mostly like earth. <laughs> like, like pow. Yeah. That is something very, very special. When you talk about dry aging steaks, you can like a 30 day or 60 or 90 day dry aged steak, but this is completely different. But it might not be for everybody. Right, you think? Yeah, I think really? so. Really? Yeah. Some people don't like the, the bold flavor. Kinderhook Farm, no wimps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The standard is fantastic. Can't get it wrong, but this is so unlike any other steak that you can buy. This thing has taken up like camp. It's the mayor of the Ben's Tongueville. Man. These animals are processed the same way as our younger animals, it's the same way as all beef is, inspected by the USDA. These are cut and eaten anyway. It's just they're not sold to the right channels and sold to the right people. It's out there, it's just if we can get, figure out how to educate people to ask for it. These two are super special, and I feel like they belong in a menu, like in the middle, in their own box, with a higher price tag just because it's special. It has a story. The flavor and the texture really stand up to it. I can't remember the last time I had anything like this and it really pays off. It's actually better. And no one's taking advantage of it and someone really should because this is really exceptional. Thanks for taking the time. Yep. This is... My pleasure. The best way to spend an afternoon. It is the <laughs> best. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching for another episode of Primetime. Click here. Or here. One of the two. Walk with me. Let us look at the ingredients with Ooh. which we can choose from. Do you want to do kind of touch football teams? Like you choose one, I choose one.